Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So today we're gonna to be having a look at Terraform. So we're gonna find out what it is, why we need it at all, and how to use it. If you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing and let's get right into it. So let's start off with what Terraform is and some of the key concepts. If you'd like to skip directly to the coding part, I'll leave timestamps in the description below. So Terraform is an infrastructure provisioning tool um, and it works using the infrastructure as a code model. So what does this really mean? It means you can take the Terraform language, so Terraform have their own language, you can write down some code that represents the infrastructure that you'd like, and then you use the Terraform commands to essentially create that infrastructure or edit and delete it. So that's essentially what it does. Um, I'll leave some links in the description below if you want to read a bit more about infrastructure as code in general. So now let's have a look at some of the key concepts for Terraform. So um, at the very top level, you have providers. So a provider is essentially an abstraction for an API. Um, is all it is, right? So if you think about um, some of the cloud providers like AWS, it has an API that you can communicate with. So a provider within Terraform is a plugin that abstracts that API away um, and it contains everything you need to interact with AWS. So um, the next two concepts, resources and data sources, all belong to a provider and we'll get onto them in a moment. So what provider might look like in code, um, you use the provider keyword, we specified in this case, hey, we're, we're dealing with AWS. And then you might have some configuration options here. So in this case, we need to provide a region. So resources and data sources, like I said, belong to a provider and they are essentially the building blocks of the infrastructure in that provider. So a resource um, actually represents a piece of infrastructure. So for example, in this case, we have an AWS instance, an EC2 instance, piece of infrastructure there, that's actually gonna create something. You could also have a, an S3 bucket or a VPC or anything that's an actual piece of infrastructure or it might be more than one that's what a resource handles. And again, you've got some uh, configuration here, AMI, instant type, and you might have some defaults that we've left out. And a data source, on the other hand, doesn't create an infrastructure, but what it does is it fetches data that you might need to use in the rest of your Terraform file. So for example, here, I have an example of um, an AWS AMI. So in the resource here, I've hard-coded the AMI, but we might want to fetch, um, fetch an AMI in this case, we're, we're filtering uh, with a name, with some owners, some kind of filters. And then what we can do is we can use this data block um, elsewhere in the resource. So in this case, I can say, instead of hard coding this AMI, let me take the data from this AWS AMI and the name, Amazon Linux 2. And then you have all the properties that are returned um, for this, basically for this search. So in this case, I would say, I think it's image ID. So use that and that's the, the AMI that I'm using there instead of having it hard-coded. So there's a lot more than this, but this is kind of the, the basics to, to get you started. So the final thing that we can look into are some of the commands that you need. So that was the, the code, and then you need the Terraform commands to actually use the code. So typically you might start with Terraform init, which initializes the uh, working directory for a Terraform project. Um, you have Terraform plan, which essentially gives you a diff of what you you know, the, the new code and new infrastructure that you've written against what is already there. So you're essentially planning what you're going to publish and it will show you the, the changes, the, the new pieces of infrastructure, the, the removed ones, etc. cetera. Um, once you're ready to actually make those changes, you can hit Terraform apply. And that's basically saying, all right, I'm good now. Make the changes, call the APIs, um, go ahead. And finally, you can hit Terraform destroy. And this is basically if you want to tear everything down, start from scratch. So I think that hopefully gives you a good understanding of the, the high level concept. Let's get right into the code. So to get started, you want to install the Terraform binary um, on whatever uh, OS that you have, and then you can just add it to the systems path. So I just use Homebrew for this because um, I'm on Mac and it just worked quite nicely. So for this example, I'm gonna be using AWS. Um, so whatever provider you're using, you just need to make sure you've set it up locally, made sure it's configured to access AWS. So for me, um, I've got AWS locally. I've configured the credentials so it's all connected, um, which is completely out of scope of this video. But um, yeah, that's all basically set up and ready to go. So I have my AWS console here on the right hand side. Um, and of course, I'm not going to go ahead and create instances through this, but this is just to see um, what's being created by Terraform. Um, so that's on the right hand side here. And then on the left hand side, we've just got an empty directory, and this is where we're going to be building out our infrastructure. So. I'm going to start off with uh, a dev directory. So I like to split up uh, in terms of environments. So this is going to be my dev environment. And I'm just going to create a main.tf file. So this is my first Terraform file. And like I said, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we've got 
um, providers. So you can see there's a big list of providers. I'm going to go with AWS here, and I'm going to specify the region. Uh, so EU uh, West 2. There we go. So what we'll do is we'll start off just having a quick look at the data block. Um, so I'm just going to copy and paste the data block that we saw earlier on. So this is going to fetch an AMI, and it's the Amazon Linux 2 AMI. So um, here's the data block. So let's see, how can we basically have a look at um, the AMI or the results? So there's another uh, block called output, and the output is basically just going to log something onto the console, and it's a way to access um, yeah, it's a way to access output from either data or resources that have been created. So this output, we'll just give it any kind of name. So let's just say AMI. And the value here is going to be data.awsami.amazonlinux2. So I'm just going to keep it that. I'm going to open up the terminal. And like I said earlier, the first thing we want to do uh, in this directory is, well, let's just cd into our dev environment. And I'm going to do terraform init. So we need to initialize, and you can see it's finding the latest version of AWS, the provider. So it needs to, I think, um, install some, I guess, um, binaries for that provider. And that's all ready to go. So now I'm going to do a Terraform plan. And let's just bring this up a bit, see how this looks. So that plan is now finished. And if I scroll up, you can see that this plan has um, logged some details. It said, hey, I'm, we're not adding anything. We're not changing anything. We're not destroying anything. And of course, that's because we've not added any resources. The only thing we've added is this data block. And then you can see the changes to output. So I have output something, which is, I've given it a name AMI. And you can see the output of this AMI. So this is returned, um, and AMI has returned all the details. So all these details here, all these properties I have access to. Um, and the image ID here is basically, or actually straight up the ID, is the AMI ID we're gonna to use to create our resource. So we can see that there. So let's bring this down and let's create our resource. So we're gonna do resource. Uh, AWS instance, and I think we called this one, it's going to be our web service. And these are the two required fields. So that's why it's populated. And again, here, I'm going to do data.awsamimi.linux2, and we can call this one ID. And then for the instance type, um, I'm going to do as a t2.micro. Cool. And this is the minimum you need to get ready. So I'm going to run a Terraform plan again. And let's see what it gives us this time. Let's bring this one up again. So you can see at the bottom here, plan one, zero to change, zero to destroy. And it gives you all the details of the instance that's going to be created. So it says here, hey, we're going to create an AWS instance. It's going to be called web service. And um, it's got all the details. So it knows the AMI ahead of time. It knows some of the details ahead of time, but everything else it doesn't know yet. So that's why it says known after apply. So once it's created, then I will know the values for, you know, for the rest of these. So now that I'm happy with those changes, I'm going to do Terraform, and I'm just going to do Apply. And when you run Terraform Apply, it still checks. It's still going to check with you, right? So it's still going to show you the plan, and it's going to say, hey, are you sure you want to do this? I'm just going to do yes. Um, alternatively, you can pass in an auto-approve flag, so it will just do that for you. So I'm just going to give it a few seconds, and um, we'll come back to it once it's finished creating. That's our Terraform apply finished. You can see the resource one added. And in the um, AWS console, we can see we have a new instance Oops, right here. Cool. So if I go into the web service uh, AWS instance again, uh, and I'm going to add um, tags. So I'm just going to add a new tag here. So I'm just going to add a tag called name. And this one is going to be, let's just say, uh, dev. So I've just added a new tag. Now let's see what happens when I do a Terraform plan. So essentially what I'm doing here is updating the infrastructure. And a lot of the times when you're updating the infrastructure, you can see here, um, it recognizes it can update it in place. So it's just saying, hey, we've got one change. We're not adding anything, but we've got one change and we can, um, and this is the change here. So it's fine. Sometimes it might need to destroy it and add it again. And that just depends on the piece of infrastructure. So I can hit apply again here and it's going to create it again. And that's basically how you can kind of go ahead with, with changes. What we're going to do instead is we're going to leave this as is for now. We're going to create a second environment um, called test. So we'll have a dev and a test environment. And we're going to see how we can share um, blocks of infrastructure between the two. So um, I'm just going to remove this tags for now. And I'm just going to create a new directory called test. So this can be for our test environment. And then I'm going to create a third one called um, uh, infra 
infra. So this is going to be kind of the, like the shared module. So this is the infrastructure and all our different environments are going to use this infra um, uh, Terraform module. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our dev main and let's see what we can share from here. So the provider will keep it up top because we might want to change the region, etc. cetera. Um, data, we could share this uh, or we could keep it up top. I'm going to just share this as well and the resource. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these remove them and I'm going to go over to the infra, create a new file called main.tf and I'm just going to paste these in here. So I've pasted this in and what we're going to do actually is we're going to bring back the tags because I want to show one other concept which is variables which is quite um, quite a cool thing to, to understand. So we can create a new variables file here, variables.tf. Again this could be in the same file, typically with a common convention you separate out variables um, the main infrastructure and things like outputs, etc. And to declare a variable, you just use the keyword variable, you give it a name. So I'm going to say, hey, you can pass in variable uh, the tags. And then here you can give it basically the type. And this is, you know, you can give it map, string, etc. So I think the type of this is a map um, with the values being a string. Um, you could pass a default. Um, yeah, I'm just going to leave the default so it's required. And then in our main, where we've got tags, we can reference that variable and say var dot tags. So this will accept um, or expect a, a tags variable to be passed in. So that's all done in the infra. That's all we need to do. And I'm going to go back up to dev main. And here, now we've, we've gotten rid of everything. What we're going to do is we're going to reference the module. So you can do that using the keyword module. So I'm going to call this module. Give this a name, whatever you want, infra, and it's got a source. So the source here is a local source. So I'm going to go up a directory, back into infra, and that's it. So you can see now it's highlighted, IntelliJ has highlighted this as yellow. Um, so if I try to see uh, what's wrong there, it's saying add property. So it's saying you're missing a required property. So it recognizes, hey, you're missing one of the variables. So I've got the tags here. I'm going to add a name. I'm going to add dev. Um, and the cool thing now is I can take this, well, I can take this entire file actually, and I can just copy it over to test. That's fine. So now I have a dev and a test file. And the test one, I'll give it a different tag called test. Cool. And that's it. So let's see if this is all working. So I'm going to clear this. I'm going to do a Terraform plan again. And you'll see that module's not installed. Anytime you make kind of fundamental changes like new providers, new modules, etc., you're going to have to initialize again so it downloads or it downloads um, everything it needs to, to perform that. So I'm going to do a Terraform init. Then I'm going to do a Terraform plan. And what we really should see here is just the change to the tags because we already have um, part of the infrastructure. Now, in this case, because we've got a new module, it's basically picking up uh, what it thinks is a completely new, um, a completely new piece of infrastructure. So, if I do Terraform apply here, instead of just seeing the, the change of tags, because we've got a new module, it's thinking, okay, this is a, a completely new, new piece of infrastructure. So, it's going to destroy what's there existing, and it's going to uh, add this new uh, EC2 instance. So, what I'll do is I'll hit yes here. So now it's going to go ahead and create the, um, the dev infrastructure. And while that's happening, I'm going to split this vertically. I'm going to CD into the test environment, and I'm just going to do Terraform init again. So this is a, a, an initializing another piece of infrastructure in the new environment. So that's the test one here. And once that happens, I will hit Terraform uh, apply. Uh, I'm just going to make this bigger as well, just so we can have a quick look at the tags, just to make sure that's all working fine. So yeah, it's creating this EC2 instance. That's all fine. And we can see that this is the test one here. So if I do value yes, and I'm just going to give that a few moments to complete. Cool. So now I've run Terraform Apply on both the dev and test environments. So I'm going to extend out my browser. I'm going to refresh that. And hopefully we see exactly that's perfect. So we can see two pieces of infrastructure, two instances, one for our dev environment and one for our test environment. So I think we're just about done. The final thing we'll show here is I'm going to run into both environments and I'm just going to clean that up. So I'm going to do a Terraform destroy here and I'm going to run a Terraform, oops, Terraform destroy here too. And again, same as the apply, it's going to say 
hey, this is the changes. Well, I want to destroy you. Sure, you want to do this? So I'm going to do yes here and yes here. So perfect. That's just finished. I'm going to refresh this and open it up. And you can see we no longer have any instances um, in our AWS console. So that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. Obviously, this was a very small example, but you can hopefully see as your infrastructure starts to build up, as you have lots of different moving pieces with lots of variables, um, hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of how easy it is to start to separate those out, create different environments, and be confident that if anything goes wrong, you can kind of easily spin it back up. So thank you very much for watching. Have a good day, and I'll see you in the next one.